Holy crap. I'm going to try to make this video again. I think this is probably like my seventh or eighth take at trying to make this video. But anyways, how's it going, guys? My name's Cody Bernardi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be going over setting up your own VPN server at home. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <clears throat> now, I want to make clear from my previous video, if you've seen it, where I talk about the reasons why you don't need a VPN, I want to make it clear. I am not against VPNs. I'm against paid VPN services that try to advertise to people that don't know any better that they need enterprise encryption and then that VPNs to just do normal browsing at home provides extra layers of protection. While enterprise encryption, that's, that's a weasel word, uh, really what that means is that they're using OpenVPN or, IK, or IKE V2, uh, AES-256 and SHA-256 for sending your data over that VPN tunnel. That's not enterprise encryption, that's just encryption. We're going to be using OpenVPN on a Raspberry Pi or a virtual server or virtual machine at home, and that's free to use. You don't need to pay for that. However, I do want to make a note from the previous video. Everything I talked about about HTTPS, about the actual data itself not being tampered with between your machine to the server, that is true. HTTPS does a very good job at doing that. However, uh, there are some bits of traffic that are not encrypted, such as DNS, which is basically you make a query to a DNS server saying, I want to find the IP address to google.com. That traffic is not encrypted. Uh, you can encrypt it, but by default, it is not encrypted. So yes, if you're using a hotel Wi-Fi or public Wi-Fi or just any Wi-Fi, the ISP and the, the, I guess the router or the host network can see and log that traffic. But if you use a paid VPN service, you're just pushing that, I guess, logging to a third party which some VPN services per say that they don't do any sort of logging, but time after time that's been proven not correct with some services. So with that, let's set up our own VPN server at home. Now, the reason why you want to set this up is the main reason I use it is I can access my internal network securely over the internet. And also I've heard, but I've not completely validated, is that I use a network visible and they cap out uh, viewing YouTube videos at 480p. But if I use a VPN over the cellular, ne cellular network, I can actually view those videos in 1080p without any issues. But I've not validated that. I've just heard that multiple times. Uh, so let's get into it. So we're going to set up an Ubuntu image on a virtual box, which I'm not going to explain in this video. I'll put a link down below on how to do that. It's very easy. Uh, if you do have questions on it, I'll try to answer them in the comments down below. Uh, but we'll install just a normal Ubuntu image. I'm running Ubuntu 18 long-term support. So we're going to install that and we're going to go to the OpenVPN access server website. Again, link down below. And we're just going to run the commands right here. Now I did run into an issue with this fresh install that the user that I created, I cannot run it as root, even as typing in sudo. I was having tons of pains trying to run as root. So I just ran sudo su, which add me or put me as root user. And I ran all the commands that you see right here uh, as root. So you're going to run through and install all or install. You're going to run all of the commands right here. And then once it's all done, you'll see this right here, access the web UI using this, you know, IP address and such like that. So we're going to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so we're going to copy this link and we're just going to load it up in a web browser. And yes, you're going to see warning potential security risk ahead. This virtual machine is running on a self-signed certificate. You could go ahead and ignore it, accept the risk and continue. Or actually, before we do that, we want to change the, uh, password to the user open VPN. So we're going to do, or actually since we're root, we're going to do P-A-S-S-W-D password open VPN. And we're going to change the password for this. And once we're done, we're going to log in right here as open VPN. And then the password that we just made. And we're going to accept the end user agreement. And bam, right there. Uh, we get the OpenVPN, uh, I guess, at, or UI. So we're allowed two VPN connections for free, which is awesome. So I'll uh, use one VPN connection for my phone and one for my laptop. Uh, but I believe that's only two concurrent VPN connections. So you can actually install this on various machines, uh, but you're only allowed two VPN connections at any given time. So let's actually bring this up a little bit more. So... 
the next thing we want to do is put this open VPN server on our edge network. We're on our DMZ on our router. Uh, the way it works is that you're going to have a port open on your router. Yes, I know uh, that's that you just got to deal with. It's going to be port 1194, but basically it's going to be what your phone's going to connect to. I don't know of a way where you could connect to a VPN server that's internal to the network. I don't think you can do that, but if you can, please leave a comment down below. That's, that's awesome. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open up a port on our router. Now I want to make a note that if you have a modern TP-Link router, this is actually built in already. You don't need to do any extra stuff as far as setting up a VM on your router or yeah, on your router, uh, a VM on your computer. Uh, you can actually do this automatically. Uh, so, and we go to advanced and VPN server and click on open VPN. Your TP-Link router will actually be a VPN server itself and it will do everything for you. Uh, so you can just hit enable VPN server, service type TCP, uh, and then VPN subnet range, uh, which 10.8.0.0 is weird or VPN subnet, sorry. So that, yes, that works. Uh, and then you can also do client access, internet and home network. I'm gonna select that. Hit save and it'll generate the certificate file, um, which is just an OVPN file. Uh, generate that and export that and you can upload it to like Google Drive where you, once you download the open VPN, um, I guess app on your phone, you can install the configuration profile on there and then you'll have VPN access that way. So in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and disable the VPN server temporarily. And we're gonna go to NAT forwarding and we're gonna go to DMZ. Now you could do port triggering uh, and you can do that if you want to, but I'm just gonna do DMZ and we're gonna go back to our um, machine over here and we're gonna throw our IP address, which is the 105, throw that right there and enable DMZ and hit save. So now our virtual machine is going to be on the border network. So if someone was to scan my public IP address, they're going to pull up the 1194 IP address or port that's running on our virtual machine, which is totally fine. They can't really do much with that unless they have the certificate file that we're going to generate right now. So now that we got that running and everything is gravy train, let's go to user management and user permissions. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna set up a user We'll just name it phone. We're gonna make it uh, admin and allow auto login uh, and hit save settings and update running server. So now that we got that, we'll go back right here and we're gonna remove admin and we're just gonna log in like this. So actually, sorry, let's go back and set up a password for that user. I apologize, that is newbie newbie for me user management, user permissions, phone, and we're gonna go to more settings and we're gonna create a password. And access control, all server-side private subnets and all VPN clients, VPN gateway, configure that. And we're just gonna do 192.168.0.0 slash 16, 10.0.0.0 slash eight save settings, update running server. Cool, so now that we got a password here on the phone and remove the admin in the URL and login as phone. Cool, now that we got all of this, not now, uh, what we want to do is download the connection profile for auto login. So now we're having issues with uh, this open VPN file, but do not worry, we are going to solve this an easy way. I've ran into this issue before. So we're gonna go ahead and now let's do client and then we will open with and more apps. We're going to open this up in Sublime. And then right here, we're gonna see 168, blah, 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 blah. So we're gonna control C this, control F, paste, find all, delete, and then from here, we are going to go back to our IP address, our public IP address, what is my IP? Search that, 
copy your public IP address, paste it into there, throw it back, upload it. God, so dumb. Downloading OpenVPN, client.openVPN, copy to OpenVPN, and bam, just like that, add import file, and then now, and just like that, we are now logged in to an OpenVPN profile, and we got it set up. Now, you can set this up on Windows or your phone or Linux, doesn't really matter. Anyways, that is it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed content like this, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you can hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, I completely forget to ask that every time. And if you could share this with every single person you know and maybe like three other people that they might know, so three, what is it called, degrees of, you know, three degrees of contact. I don't know what the hell it's called. If you could do that, that'd be awesome as well. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Have a good day. Goodbye. Our board of directors has agreed to the acquisition of NCT software by Oracle Corporation for a billion dollars. You guys have worked hard and you've all earned your stock option. Congratulations! Yeah.